Welcome to Scripture and Prayer Time, a Tuesday edition. Bowtie Tuesday, as I like to call it. And I hope that you will share the Scripture and Prayer Time with someone that you know needs to hear a word from the Lord, because that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be reading from God's Holy Word. And today we're going to be looking at 1 Samuel 30. And then we'll be praying Psalm 123. Psalm 123 and 1 Samuel 30. We'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 1 Samuel 30 says, Now when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid against the Negeb and against Ziklag. They had overcome Ziklag and burned it with fire, and taken captive the women and all who were in it, both great and small. They killed no one, but carried them off and went their way. And when David and his men came to the city, they found it burned with fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. David's two wives also had been taken captive, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, Bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue after this band? Shall I overtake them? He answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake and shall surely rescue. So David set out, and the six hundred men who were with him, and they came to the brook Besor, where those who were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and four hundred men. Two hundred stayed behind, who were too exhausted to cross the brook Besor. They found an Egyptian in the open country and brought him to David, and they gave him bread, and he ate. They gave him water to drink, and they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit revived, for he had not eaten bread or drunk water for three days and three nights. And David said to him, To whom do you belong, and where are you from? He said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. And my master left me behind because I fell sick three days ago. We made a raid against the Negeb of the Cherethites and against that which belongs to Judah and against the Negeb of Caleb. And we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, Will you take me down to this band? And he said, Swear to me by God that you will not kill me or deliver me into the hands of my master and I will take you down to this band. And when he had taken him down, behold, they were spread abroad over all the land, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. And David struck them down from twilight until the evening of the next day, and not a man of them escaped except four hundred young men who mounted camels and fled. David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken, and David's, David rescued his two wives. Nothing was missing whether small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything that had been taken. David brought back all. David also captured all the flocks and herds, and the people drove the livestock before him and said, This is David's spoil. Then David came to the two hundred men who had been too exhausted to follow David and who had been left at the brook Besor. And they went out to meet David and to meet the people who were with him. And when David came near to the people, he greeted them. Then all the wicked and worthless fellows among the men who had gone with David said, Because they did not go with us, we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered, except that each man may lead away his wife and children and depart. But David said, You shall not do so, my brothers, with what the Lord has given us. He has preserved us and given into our hand the band that came against us. Who would listen to you in this matter? For as his share is who goes down into the battle, so shall his share be who stays by the baggage. They shall share alike. And he made it a statute and a rule for Israel from that day forward to this day. When David came to Ziklag, he sent part of the spoil to his friends, the elders of Judah, saying, Here is a present for you from the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. 
It was for those in Bethel, in Ramoth of the Negeb, in Jatir, in Eror, in Sifmoth, in Eshtimoa, in Rakal, in the cities of Jeremiahites, in the cities of the Kenites, in Horma, in Borashan, in Ithik, in Hebron, for all the places where David and his men had roamed. Not a story that we hear all that often, is it? But David uh, does make some interesting decisions here. Some of his army stays behind. They're too exhausted to go into battle. And that makes sense. You wouldn't want exhausted uh, men going into battle. That would just hurt themselves and not be of any good. And the people that go into battle win the victory because it is the Lord's victory. God wins this victory. But they don't. some of them don't want to share the victory with those who stayed behind. And David makes this decision that, nope, we all share in the victory because we're all on the same side. We're all children of God. In fact, he makes this interesting comment. Everything that we have is not ours. It's not ours to dole out, to share or not to share. It is God's. And he entrusts it to us. That's a, a good lesson for us today. Everything that we have, the properties, the homes that we live in, um, the, the resources that we've given, financial or whatnot, they're not really ours. They are God's. And we are to use them to God's glory. David also wants to know what to do at the beginning of the story. And so he inquires of the Lord. And the Lord answers right away that you should do this thing. Sometimes, though, we know that when we ask of God, he doesn't always answer right away. And so when we ask of God for something, we should also be asking for patience to hear his word and to wait patiently for the answer because he will answer us because he loves us and he'll give us exactly what we need, not always what we want. Let's turn to our prayers and our prayers today are Psalm, will begin with Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes. O you who are enthroned in the heavens, behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maidservant to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, till he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. For we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than enough of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. Lord, help us to be patient. We do hold on to the promise that you will give us the desires of our heart as we ask in the name of Jesus. But sometimes we'll need to ask for two additional things, patience for your answer and to align out the desires of our heart to your will. Lord, today we want to pray for healing for Pastor Timothy Kinney who is going through treatment for cancer and ask that you would completely heal him. We also ask for your healing on Michael, that you would give him strength back to his legs so that he can walk and so that he can be at ease again uh, and patient, of course, for him and his wife, Ginger. Thank you for their friendship with me especially, but give them healing, Lord, as they're so faithful to your will and to your ways. I ask that you would also be with Marilyn, who seeks to walk again, that you will give her patience, but also healing in her legs so that she can walk. Thank you for hearing our prayers on behalf of Jennifer, who is dealing with heart issues and continue to ask you to strengthen her heart. We ask that you would be with your church, Lord, that she would be strengthened in her mission and ministry and that she will take the good news of Jesus as they, the people in the church work together as the body of Christ to tell this good news to others. Lord, hear all these prayers on behalf of your Son, Jesus Christ, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and... Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to the beginning of this day and ask that you would keep us this day from all sin and every evil so that all our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with us that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. Now go in the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Again, share this video with someone you love that needs to hear a word from the Lord. And as you go in the blessing of the Lord, I hope that you will join me again next time. God's richest blessings to you.